Here's the thing about technology and especially things like home labbing. Unfortunately, it seems like you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars just to get to the point where you can experiment or just have fun with this home labbing hobby. And that's not wrong if you're going to do what we call the bare metal route. And right behind me is my server rack. I've got a ton of servers in there. I've got a ton of uh, Raspberry Pis. I've got my managed switch. I've got my router in there. And that little box over there is thousands of dollars that I have spent. And I recognize, you know, that's a barrier of entry for a lot of people. And that doesn't sit well with me because we're using open source. You know, everything else is free, but yet we have to spend thousands of dollars on the technology and hardware to run it. And that just creates a barrier of entry that doesn't allow a lot of people to get into this. Well, today I'm going to show you guys a way that you can pretty much duplicate everything I've done over my shoulder here in my server rack by using a decent PC and virtual machines. The first thing we need to do in this process is to make sure the desktop you are working on has enough resources to cut up in order to apply to our virtual machines. So we're going to be assuming that you're on a Windows environment and you need to chuck a couple things first before we begin. First, you need to make sure that virtualization is enabled on your BIOS. And then you also need to check that virtualization is enabled within Windows. Now, I'm not going to go through that process. It's different depending on what version of Windows you're on, but I will have it linked down below. So make sure that you have checked those links before you move forward. Now let's talk about your host machine. Now your host machine is the one that's going to be hosting these virtual machines and we need to check its resources as well. So in order to do that, you need to go over to your search bar and type in about. You'll see up top here about your PC. One of the things that we're gonna note is the processor. Right here, you can see we have a Ryzen 5 5600G, and then we wanna see how much installed RAM we have. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so that should be pretty sufficient. Now remember, we're going to be cutting these two things up and applying some of the resources being CPU cores and threads and some of the RAM to our virtual machines. So we need to check how many cores and threads that you have in your processor. In order to do that, just simply head over to Google or whatever your preferred search engine is, type in your processor and then type in cores and threads. You just need to make sure you have a decent amount of cores, probably more like you know above two cores if you're gonna, depending on how many virtual machines you're gonna launch. Now I typically like to dedicate one to two cores per virtual machine. Uh, so, you know, this is just good data to keep in mind to see if what you currently have, you can actually do this, or if you're intending to build a computer for virtualization, this right here is something that's going to be really important for you. The higher, the better. The next thing we need to do is actually install something called VirtualBox. So if we go to Google again and we just type in VirtualBox, we'll do images later, but um, this is a product by Oracle. Go here to the Downloads tab. Once you get to the Downloads tab, depending on what system you're using, um, we're gonna be using Windows. You can just download it right here. You can walk through that download. Now I already have it set up. So let's get into the fun part and setting up our first virtual machine. Right now, once you've got VirtualBox installed, you should come up to something that looks like this. And this is VirtualBox, which will be our hypervisor platform that we're gonna launch our virtual machines on. Now you won't have to see these things on the left. These are actually my virtual machines that I have powered off right now. And this is a good time to, to say that it's not gonna take any resources when they're powered off. So you can see I have quite a few here. And I actually use this for testing out different types of distribution so I can get to know which type of distribution I like for certain different things. So it's a great test environment above and beyond, you know, setting up these machines for home labbing. You can actually use it to test out distributions or even to test out code. It's non-destructive. So if you, if you mess up something, you can always delete this and, and relaunch it uh, and you're back to square one. Uh, but also if you shut it down, it will, it will save the state uh, or it will save anything that you've done on it. So it's not going to delete any of the information. It's just like having a computer inside of a computer. So it's a really neat platform. So one of the things I like to do, and there's many ways to do this in in terms of getting your ISO files for setting up a virtual machine. And I think the easiest way is actually to go out and leverage something we call um, virtual box images. So if I go to Google and I type in virtual box images, I use a lot of this one, which is called Linux VM images. If you click here, uh, this actually provides you with not only virtual box images, but also VMware images if, if you're someone who uses VMware. And I do trust this site. They've just packaged this all together to make it really easy by making definition files and VDI files that you can grab. Now, the other way to do this is you could go out to, let's say, KDE, KDE Neon if you wanted that as an OS, and you could download the ISO and you can set this up in a more manual way. 
but this is going to provide more of that one click install so you don't have to go through all the details so today what i'm going to do is i'm going to try out rocky linux 9 and if i go ahead and hit the virtual box image that's going to bring us to the page itself now there's a couple things that we want to note here here are our downloads now if you want a minimal installation, that's not going to have a GUI, which is really good if you just want to use this to be able to SHN, SSHN, or just use it as a terminal to um, host a lot of your applications. But you can also do the graphical launch as well, or the graphical install, and that's what we're going to end up doing today. Down below that, you just want to note some of the details. This is what it's going to set up by default. These are the normally the things that you'd have to put in manually, but these image files um, actually include this. Now on the right hand side, you just want to take note, Rocky Linux and the password is Rocky Linux. Of course, you're going to want to change those if you have these in production. So once you go up here, you will go ahead. In this case, we're going to download the graphical installation. We'll download that. That's going to give us a zip file. Now I've already done that. If we go over here, I've created in my documents a area that's called virtual machine images. Then I have zips and then I have Rocky Linux because I've unzipped this. So if you're not familiar with that process, right click here and just hit extract on one of these, the Rocky Linux, hit extract all. It will bring you into, if we go back to where we were, it will give you these two files. One is a VDF file, one is a virtual box image. What I like to do is actually cut these and I'll bring it back one level to my images and I'll paste it in here. So now that it's in here, these two different files, all we need to do, which is wonderful, is click this uh, definition file. So Rocky Linux, I'll double click that. And that pulled up my uh, session. So right here, you'll notice on the right hand side, if I highlight this, it's gonna give us the details. It's gonna give itself two gigs of RAM. It's gonna give it two processors out of, um, I believe I have like 16. And I'll show you that here in a minute. If I wanna make some adjustments here, I just hit right click and then I go to settings. And that's gonna give me the ability to set this up a little bit further. Let's say I wanted to bust this up to about four gigs of RAM and my processor, it's gonna give me um, two out of 12. So remember we checked the cores and the threads, it's combining those. So this will give you an idea by launching your first one, how many CPUs you have to play with now remember, this is in total. You don't want to use 12 CPUs because you got to save some space for um, some CPU power for your um, computer itself. And remember, if you're going to play a game or something like that, you probably want to shut down these um, virtual machines if you have them production hosting applications uh, just because you want to have your full resources for the game itself or for processing or whatever. Now, if you're just going to surf, surf the web, you know, it's no big deal to have a few of these even running while you're doing all that stuff. So um, you really just want to pay attention to that. I'm fine with the two cpus so i'm going to hit okay oh the other thing to notice if you wanted to change some of uh, the information here uh, in terms of giving it a bit more uh, hard drive space you could do that as well i typically leave them as defaults one of the things to mention once you get this all set up is it is going to take a portion of your hard drive um, but it's it's not going to keep it right it's only going to keep the install of the os and that's how much it can use so it has it reserved, but it's not going to prevent you from, you know, using it if you need it on other um, different resources. So what we need to do here is just simply double click it. Once we double click it, it will launch and it will, you would see over here, it says powering up in a minute. And it, of course, it did it over on my other screen. Let me pull this over. You will see that it starts pulling it up and went right into grub. Uh, and it's just going to start the install process. This typically doesn't take too long. Um, and here we go. Now in a few seconds, we should probably end up seeing the login here. All right, and just as we suspected, we now just that easy have launched our instance. So Rocky Linux, and if you recall, we checked that password, it was Rocky Linux. And now all of a sudden, guess what guys? We actually have an instance of Rocky Linux running on our host machine. So again, this will take just a few minutes to warm up. You can see right away, we are inside Rocky Linux and you can do you know pretty much anything you want. You have um, internet on this thing. So let's go ahead and pull up Firefox, for example, just to show you that it, it sets all this stuff up on its own. Um, so this will just take a minute. It's a brand new install. So it's just warming up, if you will, feeding the mice and the hamsters on the wheels. So let's wait a minute to have this come up. And I just wanted to show you that it does in fact have uh, internet access here. So you can see we're actually going ahead and, uh, you know, let's look at Rocky Linux wiki. And yep, there we go. So we have internet and this is a machine just like you would have if you had it on bare metal. So this should give you a really good idea. The other thing too, is you can go here 
up top. Um, let me get out of here. So I have it set up as uh, right control. And that basically just brings me out of that instance. Uh, so now I'm in the instance, but I'm inside of VirtualBox. I can go to view full screen. And what it's going to say is host F. So mine is right control F. It, it will bring me out of it. So if I go ahead and hit switch, um, that is going to bring me up to a full, it should, uh, view of this. So let me go over here, close this part. And we still are not full screen here. Let's see if we can fix that. So let's go to activities. Let's right click the desktop. Let's go to display settings and let's see what it's set at. Now this monitor I know is, yep, so it's not set correctly. This is a 1080 monitor. I'll hit apply and that should bring it full screen. So now you can see this, I'll keep changes. This actually looks um, you know, like a native computer on, on my box and I can switch back and forth out of it. Now, um, if I want to, I can just go ahead and shut this down. Uh, via the normal way you would do it on the virtual machine or what I can do is drop out of uh, full screen so we'll take it out of full screen and then I'll just go over here and I'll hit the X button now I wanted to show you this you can power off the machine or you can save the machine state just know that if you power it down you're not gonna lose any of your information and if you want it to come back to like the exact state like with your browser open and everything else you could save the state of this in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and power it off so now you can see it's completely off now if I wanted to edit this again you just go into here hit settings but then I can also remove it if I hit remove it's gonna give me the option to delete all the files or just remove this instance uh, so this would remove that hard drive space they would remove all the, the you know all the files maybe if you change the user it's gonna remove all that uh, if you do delete all files and I typically do 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 uh, delete all files if I'm trying to launch this cleanly so this way you can kind of see where we're going with this now you have these machines that you can add on different stuff to my recommendation is you check some of the links down below I don't want to go into it but I've done a whole series on home labbing and you probably want to start by installing docker once you install docker on these virtual machines that's going to give you the ability to use these virtual machines to host a bunch of different applications for home labbing so for instance if I was using this and let's say I had three or four of these virtual machines. I'm just gonna give them you know, non-graphical installs. I'm gonna give them maybe two gigabytes each. I'm gonna give them two CPUs each. So that means I'm using six gigs of RAM out of my 32, and I'm using six CPU cores and threads out of my 12. Uh, so again, you just wanna be careful because if you know, it's ideal if you have a second machine doing this, but if this is your machine that you work on all the time, you know, you may just have to be comfortable. And one of the concessions is just turning them off when you're gaming, as I mentioned, or turning them off if you notice anything. But I've done, um, you know, I've had six uh, cores dedicated to this out of my 12. Um, and I've gone up to each one having four, which would be 12 gigabytes out of my 32 uh, gigs of RAM. Uh, I'm not playing games, but I'm just doing everyday stuff, you know, surfing the web, watching YouTube. I didn't have any problems. So again, the concept is you would have three, four, five, whatever you can afford in terms of your CPU cycles and, and your RAM and your hard drive space. And then those would stay live and actually host all your different applications by using something like Docker. So if you're not familiar with Docker, make sure you check out the video up at top here. That'll give you a great idea of where you need to start. And now you can use these virtual machines to set up a virtual home lab environment. So anyways, I hope you found value in this. My name's Hill Phantom. I really hope that you will like and subscribe. It helps me greatly. And as always, I'll see you next time.